retired from the Charlotte Fire Department and I'm currently president of FIERO, the Fire Industry Equipment Research Organization. I'm here to look at a product that meets a need that I think the fire service has been uh, been seeking for several years. I've been, I'm a former member of the NFPA Technical Committee and aware of some studies that have gone on showing that firefighters are actually larger when wearing their full protective equipment than the general population and yet the seating inside of cabs is, is very cramped as a result of that and there have been studies done by NIOSH saying we need wider seats and more room in the cab and uh, what I've seen today I think really addresses that need. We saw a new cab, the HS series by E1. It's uh, I guess it's sort of a total makeover of the hush that was popular many years ago. The engine is out of the cab. That's the key thing. It's, it's now back over the rear axle. And the people at E1 will say it's not just a do-over of the original hush, that it is actually completely redone. Just the concept of taking the engine out of the cab and putting it toward the rear is, is, is what makes, makes this uh, an especially appealing cab, I think, for firefighters. That's it right so there. Much that, that is absolutely. The air conditioning is is quiet. It is. Often you hear a lot of noise from the movement of air. Having it right here is a good idea too. That's yes. a extremely quiet, smooth, excellent pickup, excellent braking. A cramp angle of 50 degrees, as someone said, it's almost like driving a zero-turn lawnmower. And uh, most impressed. Uh, the cooling system, it's a three-level cooling system, it worked fabulously. But the slide-out is, uh, it, it's very, very simple. You don't even have to empty the compartments, that, the rear compartment just slides back and you, you just walk right up to the engine as if it were on a stand and maintenance before it was even applied to, or to the truck. And the, uh, the fluid levels are actual dipsticks. They're at a perfect level to check them from the ground. Uh, easily accessible. I think firefighters will, uh, will really enjoy that feature. I think mechanics will also find that this design is equal to if not superior to a tilt cab as far as access to the engine. Well, the interior of the cab is, is what really impresses me most because it's now um, like a blank canvas. We often hear the expression, thinking outside the box. When I look at this cab, I say, hmm, they took the box out. Because if you look at other uh, engine forward type chassis, it really takes up a lot of real estate. Now that's completely gone. You've got room for storage, uh, room for extra cabinets. The seat configuration is, is almost infinite from four across the back wall to three, rear facing, forward facing. Uh, lots of room to add mobile data terminals or pads or anything that the officer needs. But one of the things that impresses me about this HS series of pumper with the engine out and, and the infinite possibilities that exist of what you can do with this almost newfound real estate is actually right outside the cab in the front. They were showing where you can actually store things right up underneath the front of the cab. And I've been particularly interested in contaminated PPE and, and cross-contamination uh, from the fire scene. And one of the, just a thought, I have weird thoughts. One, one of the thoughts I had was, what a great place to put a, on the outside where you can take off your dirty PPE, put it in a place there to take back to the station and not cross-contaminate the interior of the cab. Uh, with that space out there, there's also other things. It's a great place to add reels, uh, rescue tools, and it's just another benefit of taking the cab, uh, excuse me, taking the engine out of the cab. I think the big thing about E1 is that they're looking forward, they're not looking backward, they're listening to the fire service and what their needs are and clearly this has been a big need to get more room in the cab and when I took the tour and listened and observed what's going on, 
I really think that there's a huge focus on the customer. I believe it was in 1989, the NFPA Technical Committee had a task group assigned to cab ergonomics. And that task, everybody said, well, that's a great name to have. Now what do we do to improve cab ergonomics? And I think we, we identified a few issues. We struggled, and certainly cabs are far better today than they were in 1989. But the steps have all been incremental. And to me, this is more than a step. This is a leap. And as I told one, someone earlier, not only in my mind is this a home run, this is a home run with runners on base.